Hello viewer, welcome for business studies form one. Can give us your feedback or ask any question uh, through our SMS line, uh, which is a uh, two two five one eight. Our Facebook page Erimu TV. All uh, through our Twitter handle Erimu underscore ke. Today we are going to look at the types of uh, human wants and uh, uh, we first start with our recent preview and then we look at the types of human wants that uh, we have. Last lesson, during our last lesson, I left you with some questions to tackle. Uh, you are supposed to give uh, features of human wants and uh, we had already discussed them. And we talked of features like human wants are insatiable. And we said that uh, you may never, human wants can never be fully uh, satisfied. Once you satisfy one want, you need to satisfy it again uh, and again and again. For instance, if you take food today, uh, you will need to take food tomorrow, even the day after. So they are never satisfied. Human wants are never uh, satisfied. The other one is that they vary in intensity and urgency. And this one means that the amount of good and service required to satisfy an individual's wants uh, may vary from one person uh, to another. For example, there is someone maybe who consumes more uh, food than another one. So they vary. They are not the same. In other words, the amount of goods and services used to satisfy wants uh, are not equal to all people. The other feature of human wants is that they are competitive. And when we say that they are competitive, uh, we mean that each and every want, um, uh, 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 in all the wants, the many wants that an individual may have, each want yearns or uh, wants to be satisfied or uh, fast. Remember, an individual has so many wants. So you will find that uh, each want is competing to be satisfied before the other one. The other, the other feature is that they are recurrent or repet repetitive. And this one means that I want demand to be satisfied again and again. The other one is that uh, some wants are universal. That means that uh, you find that when you go to different areas, different countries, you find that the ones that are in this country are the same ones in this other country. So we say that they are a universal or they are common to all uh, human beings. The other one is that they are habitual. They are habitual and this one comes by after one gets used to using a given commodity or as uh, any service. So once you get used to that service, uh, it happens that you cannot do without it. So you develop a taste, you develop a habit of taking a given commodity. And therefore, you have to use it over and over again. And when you have to use it over and over again, it's kind of you become addicted. So we say they are habitual. The other one is that they require resources. They require resources. And when we talk of resources, we are talking of financial resources, human resources, and sometimes even physical uh, resources. You cannot satisfy wants uh, without money. For instance, maybe you need to buy uh, a, a new a new clothing, and you need when you you need to buy a new clothing, uh, you need money. You need money to go and buy that. So you are going to use finance uh, resource. So all human wants require uh, resources, be it your want needs to be satisfied using a service or a good. It's good to note that all of them require resources to be uh, satisfied. The other one is that they are complementary. They are complementary. And when we say that uh, human wants are complementary, uh, we mean that when you, once you satisfy one uh, want, it may create uh, another want. For instance, let's say you want to buy a car. When you buy a car, that will make you demand something else, and that something else is fuel. So if a, a, if a want, if you are satisfying a want makes, you, makes it to have another want, we say that uh, the, the human wants are, are complementary. 
Uh, right now, look at the specific objectives of the reason. I've said earlier on that you are going to look at the types of human wants. And by the end of the reason, I would expect you to be able to differentiate between basic wants and secondary wants. And then you should also be able to define goods. Then you should also be able to state and explain the characteristics uh, of goods. Remember, we said earlier on that human wants are satisfied using goods and uh, services. But in this lesson, you're first going to look at what are goods and what are the characteristics uh, of these goods that we use to satisfy uh, the various types of wants that you have. But now, you're going to start with uh, looking at the types of wants that we have. It's good to note that human wants can be broadly cat uh, categorized into two. One, we have basic wants, and two, we have secondary wants. We are going to look at each and every type of want in details, but it's important at this point you note that basic wants are the wants uh, that you cannot uh, do without. And the basic wants are also called primary wants. These are the requirements that one cannot do without because they are very necessary for our survival. They are necessary for life. For example, you cannot do without food. If you take so long without eating, just to die. You cannot survive without shelter. That is, uh, you need somewhere where you need to survive in, like a house, a good house where you can uh, survive in. You can also not survive without clothing. You cannot survive naked all through. You are a human being, so you need clothing. So when we talk of food, shelter, and clothing, uh, those are wants. They are, they, are, they are wants that we need so much in our life, in our day-to-day -day life. And uh, since we cannot do without them, we call them basic wants or our primary wants. And uh, let's now look at the characteristics of basic wants. And one of the characteristics is that uh, a human being cannot do without them. You cannot survive without eating, for example. So one cannot do without them. The other one is that they are felt needs. They are felt needs. That means if you lack them, you will suffer a lot. So you need to make sure that you always have them. So their needs is uh, felt. The other one is that they cannot be postponed. For example, you cannot postpone taking food uh, for today, tomorrow, even the day after. You, you just suffer. You will suffer if you don't uh, take food. You cannot postpone uh, living in a house. You need to shelter day in, day out. So they cannot be postponed. The other one is that they are satisfied before uh, secondary wants. You are going to look at what are secondary wants, but secondary wants are also known as luxuries. You can do without them. And uh, an example of a secondary want is a car. You can do without a car. You can do without a five-bedroom house. Provided you have a house, whether it's small or not, uh, you can, uh, the fact is that you have a house. So we are going to look at um, secondary wants uh, in the course of our lesson. Uh, but on this point, we are saying that basic wants are satisfied before uh, secondary wants because basic wants you cannot do without them, but you can do without uh, secondary wants. Let's now look at these secondary wants. And secondary wants are the requirements that one can do without, but they are needed uh, to make life more comfortable. They are needed to make life more comfortable. For example, a TV set can do without a TV. It's not a must to watch a TV, though you may feel you may want to watch it, but if you are not financially okay, you can do without it, but and uh, nothing would happen. You do not suffer for that. You can do without a car. So, uh, secondary wants are the wants that you can do without. We categorize, we categorize secondary wants into two. You can categorize them either as comforts or luxuries. Secondary wants can be categorized either as comforts or uh, luxuries. And the comforts are wants that improves one's standard of living beyond the mere survival. For example, furniture. You can do without furniture, 
But if you are in a position to afford furniture, uh, your life becomes more comfortable. You can you also security, even education. You can live without education and you still will survive. But once you, if you are in a position to acquire education, get maybe a good job, then your life will be more comfortable. So education is a comfort. Medical care is a comfort. Security is a comfort. Furniture is a comfort and many others. Let's now look at luxuries. What are luxuries? Luxuries are requirements uh, that provide excessive comfort. They provide excessive comfort. You have said that um, luxuries provide excess comfort, but uh, comfort comfort improves one living standard beyond the a mere survival. Now, an example of a luxury is a gold watch, diamond earring. You can put on an earring, but it must not be necessarily gold. But you may opt to put on a, a, a more expensive earring, like a diamond earring. So that one is a luxury. Living in a five-bedroom house, you can one can survive in a single-roomed house. And still, you'd say that person has a shelter. But now, going ahead and acquiring a five-bedroom house, that one is a, a luxury. Biscuits and sweets. Uh, you, when you take biscuits and sweets, we call them luxuries because you can do without uh, taking them. Uh, that marks the end of our lesson. I'm going to review with uh, some assignment. Number one, give any two differences between basic wants and the secondary wants. Give any two differences between basic wants and the secondary wants. Number two, distinguish between luxuries and wants. Distinguish between luxuries and wants. Thank you for watching. I'm going to review with our business quote of the day. And it says, building a mission and building a business go hard in hard. Building a mission and building a business go hard in hand. So for you to build your business, it's just like the way you can build a mission. You have to plan for it before you even start. Same case to business. For you to start up a business, you need to first of all put plans in place. See you, for, see you in next during our next lesson.